All right. Um, today, what we're going to do is we are going to, um, first of all, um, spend a few minutes to review for the final exam and talk about that a little bit. Um, then I will take any questions that you have project related. Um, and the remainder of the time will be time for you to work on projects or assignments or, or whatever. So let's start off by reviewing for the final exam. First of all, as far as logistics go, the final exam will be made available um, Saturday. Um, I don't, I, you know, couldn't tell you the exact time. <laughs> if I'm up late Friday night, I'll enable it Friday, you know, uh, midnight Saturday. If not, you know, maybe 8 in the morning, give or take. If it gets to be noonish and you're chomping at the bit and you notice that it uh, has not been enabled, send me an email. Maybe something went wrong or um, whatever. But certainly by noon on Saturday it should be enabled. You have until, I forget when, to complete it. But that's documented in Angel. Let's see. You have until be uh, available starting on twelve three, and you have until the end of day twelve seven. which is what? Probably, yeah, um, next Wednesday. So you have from Saturday the 3rd through Wednesday the 7th. People ask me what end of the day means. End of the day means end of the day, you know. Um, midnight um, on that Wednesday, or 11.59 p.m. on that Wednesday. I guess midnight's the next day, technically. But I have a feeling I'll look the other way if you turn it in midnight on Thursday. Uh, the format will be similar to the, the midterm. It is open book, open notes, and, and all that, but it must be your own words. All right? It must be your own words. You need to indicate that you understand the material, and even if you use a reference to look something up, that's fine. You know, it's, it's open book, open notes. But, again, you need to put things in your own words. So, it, you know, uh, it amazes me sometimes to, to see, and, and I have actually done this, I'm sure no one that I'm speaking with now, but um, where I, I look at and see the most technical sounding language that I've ever read in my life, you know, looks like a PhD dissertation, and it's like, you know, people don't talk like that <laughs> normally, so, you know, a quick Google and I usually find out where it came from, and, and, and that's not good, so. Don't make me do that, so please use your own words. Um, you have two and a half hours to complete it. Um, it's designed to be approximately a two-hour test, but I give a little bit of slack time, you know, so two and a half hours. If you can't complete it within that period, let me know, and uh, we'll arrange something. Yes? Will we have to do anything in Access? Yes. Yes, you will, you will have to do some, uh, some things in Access. Let's look at the review sheet. Uh, the, the exam actually has four parts. I do know the library here has extended hours next week, if that is um, a question, you know, of using a machine that, that has access. I'm not sure if they have access over there or not. You could check. Uh, and again, our open lab is open quite a bit. Anyhow, there's four points worth a total of, or four parts rather, worth a total of 30 points divided as you see there. General concepts, which is written sort of stuff. Uh, database design, normalization, SQL, and then access hands-on. So access is worth 12 points. The other three parts combined are worth 18 points. So it's 18 points worth of written stuff, 12 points of access. General concepts would be 
sort of like short answer questions like, you know, um, why is it a good idea to implement foreign keys in a database? What could go wrong if you didn't implement foreign keys in a database? Questions along those lines. All right. Whereas, you know, you, you, uh, you know to answer them, uh, you, you need an understanding of the concepts and need to be able to apply the concepts to, to a given situation. Database design normalization, I may present you a problem in any number of ways. I might show you, for example, a spreadsheet and say, here's a spreadsheet, we want to make a database out of it. What should the tables look like? I might give you a list of rules, you know, like I've done several times in class, you know, um, like, you know, a pizza can have many toppings, uh, a pizza, uh, an order can contain many pizzas, an order can be delivery or pickup, you know, that kind of thing where I give a list of rules. The bottom line is what you'll do is you'll produce a set of tables that are normalized that fulfill those rules or that take the data in the spreadsheet and, and normalize it and break it down. I want you to use this notation on the final. The notation that um, you've seen in the book and I've probably used it sometimes in writing it where you put the table and then the primary key you indicate with an asterisk, then you list the attributes, and then if you have a foreign key, you indicate with two asterisks. So maybe this is the employee table, and you have an employee ID, name, address, department ID. If something were to be both a primary key and a, uh, a foreign key, indicate with, uh, indicate with um, both the single asterisk and the double asterisk. So we might have an order item table whose primary key is a combination of the order ID and the item ID, but the item ID and order ID are also foreign keys into their respective tables. So if a, if a column is both a foreign key and a primary key, show it this way. So the name of the table, parentheses, a list of the columns in that table, and then the single and or the double asterisk indicating whether, um, whether it's a, a primary key or, or a foreign key. So that would be the output of that data normalization. It would be a set of tables like this, you know, um, that need, to, that need to, to fulfill some certain condition. SQL written. Um, I will tell you that they will only be SQL select statements. I will not ask you to write an insert, update, or delete. So they'll only be select statements. I'll give you some tables and you need to write the SQL statement that, uh, you know, I'll give you a set of tables that will apply for all three SQL questions and then I will ask you to um, to write the SQL statement that gives me this. Write the SQL statement that gives me this. And it could inv involve uh, um, uh, aggregate functions, it could involve joins, um, it could involve where clauses that limit, it could involve order by. It probably won't do some of the advanced things like a subquery. You, you don't have to worry about those. You don't have to worry about unions, for example. Just the, main, the, the things that we spent the most time in class will be the things that, that will be covered on the exam. If memory serves, and don't quote me on this, and I reserve the right to change, but there's six questions in this category, so like one point each, there are, there is one question in this category, just one big question, a design project. Of course you can get partial credits, not all or nothing. There will be um, three questions in here where the SQL statements are worth two points each. And then finally, the ac access hands-on will have a series of steps. 
I don't know how many steps those are, but it will sum up to be uh, 12 points. Here are some of the key concepts. Again, this, this final, it's kind of hard to have this final not be comprehensive. So, um, cons you know, it is comprehensive. You know, uh, all the stuff we studied in the first part uh, is relevant. So look over your midterm and look over the study guide for the midterm. Basic definition kind of things. But not just to be able to spit out the definition, to understand the purpose and understand how they're used, you know. Like, for example, I could define what an index is, but when would you use an index? You know, what would be a good idea to use an index for? Um, what benefits do foreign keys provide you? That sort of thing. So go beyond just knowing the definition to understand really the purpose of it and why they're used. The advantages and disadvantages of relational databases. Um, data integrity, referential integrity. Um, the importance of it how we accomplish it, and what we can do as far as deleting and updating with the cascade delete and all that. Normalization, you know, understand an overview, and, and also understand uh, what's meant by an anomaly and the importance of an anomaly. Uh, database administration, um, there was stuff that we covered in class. There was also a fair amount of stuff in the book that you would want to uh, look at concerning backup, security, transactions, concurrency, locking, distributed systems, web database processing, and then finally business intelligence, OLTP versus OLAP. Any questions over that section? Can you maybe review the anomalies? Yeah. Uh, anomaly uh, is simply, um, you know, uh, anomaly means that, that uh, something's wrong, a, a problem, essentially, a, a, a unusual bad situation. Um, an example of an anomaly would be this. Let's say we have an unnormalized database, all right? And we had this in the database, a student table that has a student ID, student name, um, the major ID, and the description of the major. So, for example, student one is Joe. He is a CISS major, and that is computer information systems. Student two is Mary, CISS computer info systems. Now, what are some of the anomalies that would exist in this table. Let, let's, let's think about some of the problems. Some of them are obvious, some of them would not be. Let's assume, by the way, that there is no major table, that the majors are stored as part of the student table. So what's, what's the problem with that? Or some of the anomalies that could occur, or problems that could occur? Yeah, you, you, could, you could have inconsistency uh, with that. Uh, you could mistype anything, so student number three, Sue, could be C-A-S-S -S instead of C-I-S-S, -S, and you could mistype that to say computer science, let's say. Computer science is a little different than computer information system, but you could, you could type that in wrong, and you could have inconsistency. So... Or if you, if you went to modify it or whatever. So one anomaly is because the major is stored as part of the student table is that you have redundant data. And as a result, there could be inconsistencies. All right? So that's one possible anomaly. A couple other anomalies exist, though. What if we have a brand new major? How do we enter in a brand new major in our system to tell people that we are now offering a major 
in mobile software design, let's say. All right? We can't do that, right? Because you have to have a student to enter in a major, all right? Because the major is entered as part of the student. So if we have a brand new major where there's no students for it, we kind of are stuck. We can't really enter it in, or we'd have to enter it in with a, a dummy student. mobile software you know with a with a with a with a with a dummy or a non-existent student all right and that's not good that's not good design because then it would look like uh, if we did a count of the number of students a it would say we have four students there well really we don't have four students there we have we have to use that so inconsistency would be one inserting data um, if, if, the, if it's not normalized, then we might have to insert data with blank data where there, that doesn't really make sense. And the last one is also a little bit subtle. Let's say we had Pete, that is our only agriculture major. All right. And let's say Pete drops out of school or otherwise leaves the college, or graduates even, or whatever. And Pete is deleted from the database. Well, we've lost the fact that we now have an agriculture major, right? Because that's stored with the student. The bottom line is, is most, most normalization problems um, mean that you're combining entities into, you're combining entities into one table. You have multiple entities, but you're trying to pass off one table as handling both of them. And the kind of anomalies that they have, there are insert, update, and delete anomalies. The insert anomaly is the fact that I can't insert a new major without putting in a fake student here. All right, so I can't put something in the one entity without at least pretending to put something in the other entity. The update anomaly is the fact that if this information is in here several places that could be inconsistent. Or let's say I change the, the code for CISS to CIS. We, we, we decided to go to three character codes instead of four character codes. We could miss one of them and there could be an inconsistency there. And then lastly, a delete anomaly. Whereas if I delete the last student for a given major, we lose that major information as well. All right. So those are that'd be a summary of the, of the three sorts of anomalies uh, that you have. Again, really the issues that result when you try to when you, when you really have two entities, but you try to try to combine them into one table. All right. Other questions on this section. If you have questions. Uh, prior to you taking the, the, the final, as you're reviewing this stuff, feel free to send me emails. I do check my email pretty regularly. Normalization. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, it has to be done continuously. If something were to happen, such as your computer crashed part of the way through and you needed to restart it and go it into again, please drop me an email as soon as you're aware of that. I think, oh, go ahead. I was just wondering if, if I could take the written part and then come in here for the answers. Okay, how, how about we talk about that uh, after lab or, or uh, after lecture? Yeah, I, yeah, well, let's talk about that then. Good question. Yeah, normalization, I'll either be given a set of, a, a table or a set of tables or a set of rules. I don't mention that there, but, you know, a set of rules. And you have to put it in third normal form. The original data could be in any condition. In other words, I could give you, I could give you a normalized database already. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be great? Uh, I, I, I've always, I've always 
wondered what 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 it would what students would do if I gave them one that was already normalized and say, "Here, go ahead and normalize this." Wh which students would have the the courage to say, "Hey, it's already done." You know, I have to admit, I probably would. I'd probably fiddle with something. But in addition to giving you the tables, I might give you a set of rules and conditions and put it in normalized form. All right, three SQL statements. Again, selecting columns, joining tables, grouping output. Sorting output, using a WHERE clause, aggregate function, and computed columns. Uh, computed columns would be if we had stored in a table the gross pay and taxes, you can calculate the net pay simply by saying field one minus field two. Probably won't have any of that in there. Lastly, access. Really, um, the purpose of the access part is just to make sure that um, you understand access well enough to do some pretty basic things in a time context. All right. Um, the project is meant to um, really show your uh, ability in access as well as the design and all that. So I'm not going to be asking you to do complex stuff in access. I'll be asking you to do pretty basic stuff, and really the only thing about it is it's a timed environment. So therefore, you know, you can't be looking it up and figuring everything out at the time. You know, you do have some time to go and refer to reference material, but um, again, you should at least have a pretty good idea so that you can go through this. All right. So I'm I'm not you know how do I want to say this. Um, my aim with this, uh, the access part, and really all the parts, is to not necessarily like throw you curveballs and go for the most obscure little thing that maybe is mentioned in a footnote in the book, or maybe I mentioned in passing during lecture. You know, I want to hit the most important points and the most important things. So, do a basic select statement that joins tables together, does an aggregate function, filters out data, that sort of thing. Do a database design. I give you a set of rules. You design a database for it. Basic concepts to understand those. And then finally in access, yeah, if you have within a time context, you can do these basic things. You know, set up a table, create some forms, create some reports. You know, nothing earth shattering at all. All right. Questions on any of this? Um, one thing I do want to clarify, a, a couple students had questions about it. I'm not sure if it came out in this class or not. Your semester project is due 12-6. All right. Some students were confused because my announcement says that my end of the semester is that um, all assignments and redos need to be turned in by 12-4. Well, that's unless otherwise noted on the assignment. So in other words, the project is still due 12-6. The 12-4 date is for any late assignments that you're turning in, any redos. So I, I have not changed the due date on the, on the project. You still have through 12-6. Through All right. Other questions? Don't hesitate to email me if you run into difficulty or questions. Anything else? Once? Twice? All right, we'll go to lab then.